There are two ways to interact with breakpoints in PowerShell. Here in the ISE, one easy way is to just set breakpoints graphically. So toggle a breakpoint or push F9. You'll notice that actually highlights the line. When you run the script, I'll get prompted for my computer name here. Line 2 will run, and then before line 3 runs, you can see that I hit a line breakpoint on line 3, and the prompt indicates that I'm in debug mode. Now that means I can go over here to the command line section, and I'm inside this script's scope, so I can look at contents of variables, like localhost. Uh, line 2 is already run, so the variable BIOS should contain something, and it does. I can work with that however much I want to. Format list star to see all the different values, and then when I'm ready, I'll just run exit to exit debug mode and continue exit executing the remainder of the script. F9 will toggle the breakpoint back off again so that my script can run normally the next time. Now the other way to play with them is to actually use the breakpoint commands. So get command, and the noun we're after is ps breakpoint. You can set, remove, or get breakpoints, and once a breakpoint has been set, you can disable it or enable it, which leaves it set but temporarily prevents it from working, basically. So the big one here is help set PS breakpoint. And there are different types of breakpoints you can set. A breakpoint that's connected to a particular script can break on a line and on a particular column, and you can have it automatically execute a script block of action. Now if you don't specify an action, the default action is just to give you that debugging prompt. You can also have a breakpoint happen when a particular command is run, and that can optionally be tied to a script, so that the breakpoint will only break when that command is run from within that script. Same thing with variables. They can be connected to a particular script, you specify the variable, and then you indicate when you want the breakpoint to occur, when the variable is read, written, or either of those. So for example, let's set a PS breakpoint right now, Let's set it on the variable computer name, and let's only have that happen when it is written, and let's have that only occur for the script at that path. Now if I were to move that script to a different path, then this breakpoint would no longer affect it. As it is, when I run that, enter a computer name, as soon as I tried to write that value into the computer name variable, I hit a variable breakpoint. So now, let's see, computer name contains nothing. And that's what I expect, because the variable breakpoint occurs before the write actually happens. So it broke because I attempted to change the contents of computer name, but it actually hasn't allowed that to happen yet. So I can exit, allow the remainder of the script to finish running, because I didn't have any other breakpoints. If I want to remove that breakpoint, I can just get all of them and pipe it to remove PS breakpoint. Now if we take a look, we have no breakpoints defined. So this is a really great way to work with breakpoints. You can do all of these same things inside of the ISE, and by setting a line breakpoint, instead of having to run the command, you can actually use the function key or the context menu shortcut.